Axios has learned from three sources with knowledge of the travel that Saudi Defense Minister Khalid bin Salman is scheduled to visit Washington on Monday for discussions with senior members of the Biden administration. Welcome everyone. In today's video, we're going to tell you Saudi Arabia fears of Israel and USA. The highest ranking Saudi official to visit Washington since the Biden administration took office is KBS, the brother of Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and a former ambassador to the United States. But before we proceed the further video, if you're new to this channel, remember, go ahead and to hit the bell icon to subscribe so you won't miss the informative videos we will upload in the future. It also coincides with concerns expressed by Saudi Arabia and the United States that a regional conflict could break out from the fighting between Israel and Hamas. Driving the news. According to the sources, KBS is scheduled to meet with many senators, Secretary of State Tony Blinken, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, and White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. The White House opted not to respond. Inquiries concerning the visit were not immediately answered by the Saudi Embassy in Washington. According to the White House, President Biden discussed U.S. diplomatic and military efforts to prevent state and non-state entities in the area from joining the battle with MBZs on Tuesday. According to the White House, Biden emphasized that the United States completely supports the defense of U.S. allies confronting terrorist threats, whether from state or non-state actors. What is being said? Earlier on Saturday, the Saudi Foreign Ministry released another statement that was critical of Israel. It opposed and decried the ground operation carried out by Israel in Gaza. The statement stated that any ground operation by Israel would result in terrible consequences and threaten the lives of Palestinian civilians. In an effort to defuse tensions in the Middle East prior to the start of the Israel-Hamas conflict, Biden pushed for a massive agreement with Saudi Arabia that included a historic peace treaty between the kingdom and Israel. There was expected to be a Palestinian component to the arrangement. This week, Biden claimed to have no proof but his instinct told him that Hamas might have struck Israel at the time in order to obstruct the negotiations between Saudi Arabia and Israel. In addition, Biden insisted that the goals of the Palestinian people would be included in this future. We need to work for better integration for Israel, Biden stated. According to the White House, during their conversation this week, MBS and Biden affirmed the necessity of working towards a permanent peace between Israelis and Palestinians as soon as the situation subsides. Saudi Arabia wanted to de-risk the Middle East. Instead, it has to hit pause on normalization with Israel, store the peace tract to ensure that the Palestinian people realize their lawful rights, and in order to establish fair and comprehensive peace, MBS reportedly told Biden, according to the Saudi royal court. It appeared that Saudi Arabia and Israel were getting closer to signing a historic agreement to restore diplomatic ties when the October 7, 2023 Hamas attack occurred. Thousands of people have perished in Israel and Gaza since then. Additionally, apprehensions about the conflict extending throughout the region serve as the backdrop for frantic diplomacy, which includes us President Joe Biden's visit to Israel on October 18. Additionally, it poses a threat to the de-risking of the area, a fundamental component of Saudi Arabia's diplomatic and internal policy. The last thing Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman needs is a resurgence of regional instability, since he is focused on implementing Vision 2030, an ambitious agenda including economic, social, and cultural aspects, and establishing the kingdom as a tourist and investment destination. De-escalating tensions. The trend toward de-escalation of tensions in most of the larger region in recent years is undoubtedly challenged by the rising bloodshed in the Middle East. Among these has been the 2020 signing of the Abraham Accords, which established diplomatic ties between Israel and Morocco, Bahrain, and the United Arab Emirates. However, it goes farther than that, encompassing multi-state agreements that have reconciled differences across the Gulf and led to the signature of a contract in March 2023 to repair ties between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Greater regional collaboration is now possible thanks to these diplomatic achievements, as seen by the Middle East Europe-India Economic Corridor, 
which was presented during the September 2023 G20 summit in India. Officials from all throughout the region hoped that economic growth would help to unite the area and divert attention from the impasse over the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The Palestinian Question The violence in Gaza and Israel poses a danger to Gulf states' ability to maintain a careful balance between courting Israel and the United States and supporting the Palestinian cause in the eyes of their predominantly Muslim populations. For example, Qatar has long hosted Hamas leadership officials while maintaining good relations with the United States. It will now probably be under intense pressure from the U.S. and Israel to remove the Hamas leadership. 2020 saw the normalization of ties between the UIA, Bahrain, and Israel in addition to Morocco. However, there was never much public support for the Abraham Accords in the region, and it may be losing ground now. The largest city in the United Arab Emirates, Dubai, is preparing to host COP28, the International Climate Change Conference, which will begin on November 30. The UAA does not want a fresh regional conflict to overshadow or jeopardize the occasion. Reaching out to Israel However, nowhere is it a more precarious tightrope than Saudi Arabia. This is due to the kingdom's position in the Islamic world, both religiously and economically. In the Muslim world, the push for Palestinian statehood has long been a hot topic, and Salman bin Abdulaziz al Saud, the present king of Saudi Arabia, has always been a devoted supporter of Palestine. However, the crown prince, his son and here, has been expressing a growing desire to communicate with Israel. The result of this has been negotiations to normalize relations between the two nations, which would be a significant development in the Arab and Islamic worlds about Israel's acceptance. Crown Prince Mohammed stated to Fox News as late as September 20 that a deal is getting closer every day. In fact, the Biden administration appeared to be driving the development of the agreement's contours, as evidenced by a number of leaks to American media in the days and weeks before the Hamas attack. However, Israel's reaction to the Hamas attack has halted this momentum. On October 13, Saudi officials informed the media that normalization negotiations had been put on hold but not abandoned. Such rhetoric aligns with Saudi efforts to strike a balance between interests at home and abroad. In a first statement released on October 7, the Saudi Foreign Ministry called for a de-escalation between the Palestinian factions and the Israeli occupation troops. However, Saudi authorities were more open about their positions during the first Friday prayer at the Grand Mosque in Mecca following the bombings. A state-appointed IAM called for support for our brothers in Palestine. It is evident that Saudi Arabia is attempting to lead diplomatic efforts to stop the conflict between Israel and Hamas from spreading into a larger conflict that could involve Lebanon, Iran, and other countries behind the outward displays of support for the Palestinian people. Crown Prince Mohammed and Iranian President Ebrahim Raisi had their first talk since diplomatic relations were restored in March on October 12, during which they talked about the events taking place in Israel and Gaza. After three days, the media reported that the Saudi and American governments had different viewpoints on the crisis and the necessity of de-escalation when the Crown Prince hosted us Secretary of State Antony Blinken in Riyadh. Oil and Foreign Investment the Crown Prince's intention to de-risk the area is consistent with these diplomatic actions. He wants to make sure that nothing puts in jeopardy a number of gigaprojects that have come to be associated with Vision 2030, like Neom, the futuristic new city on the Red Sea coast. Saudi Arabia fears that international investment in Vision 2030 may be discouraged by an extended or regional conflict. The success of the project was viewed as dependent on foreign funding. However, after the Saudi government detained dozens of prominent Saudi businessmen in the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in 2017 on charges of corruption, foreign investment fell sharply. The idea that their business partners might vanish overnight or be intimidated alarmed investors. Consequently, the Saudis are now required to bear a larger share of the costs associated with Vision 2030. This explains why representatives from Saudi Arabia and Russia have collaborated during OPEC meetings to maintain the price of oil at a level that allows for sufficient income generation to support the project. Crown Prince Mohammed is determined to lessen sources of regional tension, notably with Iran, because Vision 2030 is so inextricably linked to his promise to reform Saudi Arabia. 
Saudi authorities have also reworked their 2030 target of 100 million tourists annually to 150 million, and they have submitted a proposal to host the FIFA World Cup in 2034. The Saudis aim to diversify the kingdom's economy and make it a destination for both capital and people. Rather than an over-reliance on oil is the driving force behind these measures. Another regional conflict in the Middle East would jeopardize these goals, particularly if it included Iran. For the time being, halting the process makes sense for Crown Prince Mohammed's cautious balancing act. Pushing on at full pace would have put the process of de-risking the Middle East and Arab world at risk from backlash from other states in the region. Additionally, it might give Saudi Arabia more clout because the United States and Israel will want to avoid completely derailing the process due to the ongoing violence. That's all for today's video. Given the outpouring of indignation in the Islamic world over the events in Gaza, stopping the process now makes tactical sense for Saudi Arabia. It also gives the Saudi leadership a chance to exert control over the next stage of what is still a very sensitive endeavor. Don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos from our channel. Thanks for watching and see you all soon.